it's quite interesting to come after people who've been talking about uh, projecting onto clouds and animating um, prehistoric uh, um, animals, because I'm really talking about something very day to day, very kind of normal and ordinary. Uh, I'm talking about how we can make better services that all of us use. Um, and I, I suppose the, the reason I'm here is that we've been taking a little bit of the, the culture of making and prototyping and making uh, things quickly to try and solve bigger problems. Um, we're just coming to the end of a project that I'm, I'm sort of going to talk about ish, uh, where we've been helping the NHS understand how to help older people have better deaths. Um, and um, I'm not really going to talk about all of our findings and learnings back to the NHS. I'm going to talk more about our approach and how we've worked and the things that we've understood. And so the Dot Everyone, we're really new. Um, we were founded, I mean, to be honest, we didn't really start properly until probably January. Um, but last year, um, my founder, um, Martha Lynn Fox, did the Dimblebee um, lecture on BBC One, which um, some of you might have seen, which was talking about how we ought to be able to make um, technology for everyone. Um, we ought to be using it as a force for good to drive equality as opposed to just money making. And um, it, it, it's taken us a little while to work out how to, how to do that and um, what it looks like. And to, be and to be really honest, we probably don't really know yet. But our, our kind of thinking right now is that there's the gap. There are people who have everything. Um, you know, the worlds that are opened up to you with the small phone in your um, pocket and a um, fast internet connection aren't there for everyone. There are 12 and a half million people in the country who don't have basic digital skills. Um, and that means that their lives are harder. And that actually, can we start to create not only w ways that that gap can be closed, but can we speed things up? Um, we're a really small team. Um, and so it's not really possible for us to do enormous projects, which means that we need to do kind of things quickly that have impact that people can understand. And the areas that we're looking at are the skills. Um, and this isn't only the, the skills of people who may need to sort of learn how to email. Say. We're really interested in the skills of commissioners, um, how much the MPs really understand about the internet as they're then legislating, um, and, and to maybe try and turn some of those th things that are a bit buzzwordy into proper things that people understand and can talk about and can have opinions about. Um, the, the team that I'm looking after is the services, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, but the other thing that we're really interested in is ethics, because um, it feels like there's lots of slightly hidden things, and there's lots of things that people who understand them, like you know, people who understand the blockchain, can have a very different conversation about the DWP um, app that was recently launched. That's basically we're tracking people's spending to people who've just kind of heard it's cool and think, oh, it's new and interesting, you know. So there's kind of lots there. And um, I will be talking mostly about the work of this group. Um, and actually, not everyone is there. There's a couple of others, too. Um, and we've kind of come together over about six months this year to do some prototyping. Uh, and I have three bits. I'll be talking about our understanding of the prototype. I'll be talking about um, how that has helped us do the hardest thing first and then kind of 
um, a little bit about our understanding and the, the value of, of that. And so the, the kind of the theme is, can we make s small things that help us to understand large problems, I guess? And the thing that I'm like really interested in, our ambition, is can we make the things that really work for everyone? And by everyone, I mean, um, so in Croydon, for instance, there are 50 families who, who use something like half of all the public service provision. You know, and they're people who really need help. And that normally, the thing that happens is the services aren't made to work for them. The things that are made to work for them are the key workers who work around them, you know. Um, and, but that actually, for things to really work and to take the flight and to be um, manageable over the time, they have to work with the people who are providing the, the, the service too, you know. So we've seen lots of, of things where, in the public sector, lots of work is workarounds. It's um, like the number of doctors I've spoken to who uh, find it quicker to WhatsApp a picture of a um, patient rather than logging into the, the system, doing a call, finding their colleague, bringing them over, you know. And so actually, for things to work, they need to work not just for the people who need them most, but they need to work for the people who are using them. And then lastly, they need to work for all of us because a good service that we're paying for ought to be kind of changing and improve, improving our lives all of the time. Um, and like that's a very high ambition, and I don't know if we're really able to achieve it, but we can try. So um, just kind of quickly about what our thinking is about prototypes. It's really important to say that we're, um, we're not at a point where we're building like um, um, pre-alpha software that's um, about to go into deploy. Um, this is more things that help us to understand problems, things that we can show to people, things that we're able to talk about. But the thing that you know is really uncomfortable there is um, how do we do that without going too far into speculative design? How do we do it without looking like we're talking about the futures that aren't really attainable? Um, and and the the a thing that I suppose um, is really clear is that if you can't imagine properly the thing that you're making, it's very difficult to work out how to make it. So if, you, like, if you're talking to people in the NHS, if you're talking to people in the government or uh, a person who um, works in the library, it isn't up to them to be understanding the implications of machine learning, right? Then the job is uh, different. So they have no frame of reference or ability to understand. Um, but because they have an expertise, they're likely to have a very compelling story. But the thing that happens low is that I'm that probably here every, everyone has seen is that uh, like the problem when um, imagining things is that everyone imagines a slightly different thing and then it never really happens or it's terrible or it's really complicated and so it's like kind of little nuggets that show the possibility in order to bring everyone together and the reason to do that is to work out how to do it um, so um, I have an example I'll talk about later where um, we spent quite a long time trying to make the sound fancy the software um, when we realized actually the problem was the people who the, the fancy software was before didn't have an internet connection right so we understood that very clearly by trying to take it in and test it um, because it was untestable so in in that in example there the kind of uh, first order problem is give them internet 
um, which you're able to start thinking about now, not in a year and a half as the project is about to launch and then it all goes wrong. Uh, and I'm about to do like a really horrible thing, which is I'm showing the Gartner hype recycle, which is very grim. Um, and the reason I'm showing it is because like, there's loads of people thinking about this. There's loads of people thinking about all these things over here that are going to happen in five years. They're thinking about the robots and AI and the fancy, clever things. But not very many people are thinking about kind of slightly more boring things, about making it work now. And the thing that tends to happen is if you're over here, I'm zooming off over here. There aren't many people who are looking backwards and thinking, how can I take everyone with me? Um, and, and, and that is really the, the thing that we need to do and start thinking about. Because actually, if you're like here, if you're in a local library thinking about how to help people use your, your service, which is like pre you know, it's kind of over here or somewhere. It's not very clear to you uh, if, if everyone is talking about uh, the clever things about um, can we automate this? Can we make an app? You know, that what it actually means. And so there's lots of kind of bad, uh, bad um, decisions that are made. So to kind of try and move this on, We've been um, making things. And this thing here is a piece of paper, very low tech. Um, and there's a lady holding it, giving it to another lady. And um, this is demonstrating um, a little bit of work we've done around creating an entitlement token for older people, um, where uh, you would, for instance, be able to walk into the farming sea and they would know it's you and have your drugs ready. If you order a cab, it's the, the right sort that you're able to get into, like uh, those are uh, things. Um, and when we started to think about it, the thing that we realised is there were loads of ethical problems. Like prior to thinking about any of the, of the technology or any of the data or any of those things, the things that we needed to know are, is this a thing that people actually want? Are they comfortable to send messages to others? Um, and, and is it feasible? Yeah. So just as a really kind of simple way of understanding that, we have a piece of paper, you know. So, and, 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 the, and the great thing about the piece of the paper is that you can show it to anyone and th they understand it. I don't have to talk about it for five minutes, it's kind of really clear. Um, because as I was saying earlier, um, like the more that you kind of understand and crystallise a thing, the easier it is to make it um, and to understand the problems of making it. And I will just quickly... I'm going to show like, some of the different kinds of prototypes that we've made. And you'd be quite correct to uh, think that this looks a bit chaotic. There's all kinds of slightly different things that do slightly different things. They're not really drawn together by a kind of common um, methodology. But they're all like, different ways of trying to get to the heart of a problem. So. Um, these here, here are some postcards um, that have RFID tags in them with audio clips. Um, this was the thing I was talking about earlier where we were thinking about, so people in care homes who might be quite isolated, who, who are quite often quite um, um, depressed or uh, lethargic and can find it quite hard to be motivated to pick up the, the phone or uh, uh, those kinds of things. Could, could, could we create quite a, a, a simple kind of, of gift giving service where you can send a card uh, to a person um, our kind of end-to-end -end experience involved phoning up a phone line, leaving a recording, and then um, that got turned into the RFID chip. Um, 
and that this kind of felt to us as people who've been thinking about kind of glanceables and ambient tech for ages, like a really, really nice uh, thing. Um, maybe it is, but I don't think it's a, a thing that anybody wants, but that's um, um, by the by. But that be because the, a thing that we learned about it was that actually there's loads of technology in the care home. I mean, there's loads of technology that could allow people to communicate. The problem is, is that people don't have it. It's not that we need to be creating new products. And actually that feels quite obvious, but it's quite a brave thing to say. It's quite a brave uh, thing when you're talking to the NHS who have lots of innovation funds who um, are trying to be really sort of modern and forward thinking and have you know, dozens of groups looking at interoperability. And you basically must say, don't make any uh, 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 things um, um, put in, um, internet in. It's almost like too easy, but sometimes uh, things are. Um, this was part of the same project. Th this is a, a bot where people could ping each other um, anonymous gifts. So it might be a recipe, a, a song, a, a picture. Um, because we did, we did quite a lot of work specifically, I suppose, looking at the value of reminiscence and of, uh, and of um, reciprocity. And um, there's, there's, there's a really important thing that um, most people don't really want to um, be helped, really and that you get a lot more out of an experience if you're given meaning and the ability to help to help another you know so this was an an exercise in trying to understand that we will look at this slightly more in a minute this is kind of probably getting a little bit more into what people think of as a prototype uh, some software um, that the front end works it doesn't really s speak to anything um, but it gives you a demonstrator capability and so like in in terms of context I think this here took a day and this was more like a month um, in terms of thinking about the whole experience and the user needs and the context um, and then we've like to kind of add to the general chaos of we're trying loads of things and seeing if it works. Experiment with putting a few things out on the internet, kind of, of, of quite n simple n sites that, that try and, I don't know, help us think about or speak to bigger things. This here is a um, site where people can uh, go and tag um, legislation that will be uh, affected by the Brexit. Um, so there's like three and a half thousand, 35,000, there's loads of laws basically. Um, and uh, it's not really known how big the problem is. Um, so we've, as an experiment, created uh, like a, a crowdsourcing wiki. But the big um, project that I was talking about that's taken up lots of our time is thinking about care for older people at, at the end of life. And, and in a way, this was quite a, a silly thing to start with because it's really, really hard. You know, dying is the most profound thing that ever happens to us. And the NHS is the most complex, disorganised organisation. Um, you know, and there aren't many people who've created technology in the NHS and come out of it kind of cheering. Um, so this was, it, it's, we, we've done it quite quickly for the thing that it is, but it's still six months and we're still writing up and, and I hope some of the things can make a proper change. But I'm not really going to talk about the end result. Um, it's more that this experience of thinking about what older people and the people around them need at the end of life has, has, has really helped uh, us to understand how important it is to sometimes tackle the hardest thing first. You know, the, the kind of classic thing if you're in a meeting at work when people say, you know, I don't know, um, easy, easy or 
like you know on those horrible um, um, Boston box things and you're grouping everything it's often really tempting to do the easy things first the easy quick things and that actually that doesn't always really help you because if there's a hundred things to do and you do 99 easy things and the hundredth is really really hard and is going to take a year and a half then that doesn't I suppose, add to the general quality of understanding. And one of the ways we've uh, done this is by really thinking about and understanding people's experiences. Um, so this is an experience map here that y you can't really see. But the, the thing to note, this is about Mike, who is uh, at the beginning in his 60s uh, and quite well and, and over the time he, he um, becomes quite un, un well. And the things that we've done is we haven't prototyped things for this whole end-to-end -end experience. We've looked at, I'll just come over here, the hardest bits. We've, um, this is really long, it like carries on and on and on and on. And in here there's about the six um, points where there are lots of people talking to each other, where there's lots of information moving around, where there's um, lots of change happening, where the actors are not stable. Uh, and we've chosen to begin there um, and, and, and to kind of take those um, moments apart and prototype those in the hope that that helps us un understand how to make those work. And partly, this is... Um, in our very emerging un un understanding of our work, the kind of clearest uh, thing is the principle that, that we ought to be creating things, as I said, for the people who need it most. Um, everybody has seen this. Um, it is not true. Um, and I think every, in every in incremental change helps. And it's been really interesting looking at the experience of older people. Um, um, Britain is now the oldest it's ever been, and we will continue getting older and older and older, and we will live for longer. Um, and uh, yet, no one really talks about it. Old people aren't present in, our, um, in the world. You know, I, I think. If I'm lucky, I will live, I'm estimated to live till I'm 98. That's a long time. That's a, a lot of life, and there's a, a, a lot of living there. Um, so actually, it f f feels really important to address the problem of, of those people who will be becoming, I suppose, well, like us, everyone here, I hope, will become an old person. You know, it's, it's, it's important to all of us. And the uh, thing that we've seen is actually, it's not like they're the niche, it's not like they're outliers. Um, they're the people who experience the, um, the kind of true NHS experience. Because if you're being seen by maybe the six doctors in the three hospitals, and you have a district nurse and an occupational therapist, it's like the absolute exploding point of all these uh, systems that don't talk to each other. Like the, the three appointments that are booked to happen on a Tuesday afternoon at opposite ends of the, the city. Like that actually, if we're able to get experience right for those people um, who are generally marginalised and not really thought of as being at the heart of the things, then actually we ought to be able to get them right for everyone but like a lot of the time when we talk about um, accessibility we're thinking about we're meeting the standards we're thinking about design we're thinking about the code we're not thinking about you know the whole experience and situating in a place that people who need it are really able to use and um I think actually prototyping and making 
tiny things is a good way of learning and, and, and understanding this because lots of the patterns that we're accustomed to are made for the people here. You know, so when you go to a service and it says um, log in with the Facebook, that presumes you have a, a Facebook um, um, account, for instance. And it's kind of interesting. Like the, it's the, the, the thing that becomes attractive to me about making lots of small things and seeing how they um, work is that it's really different to the things that are happening in the, the valley. Um, this here is the people who write the Facebook timeline algorithm, all eight of them, um, all men. Um, and they're making choices about the things that I think 1.3 billion people see, right? Uh, so actually, there becomes, like, just as an almost an intellectual exercise, there's a, a, something quite pleasing about moving away from those really standardized things. Have I turned off? I may have turned off. Well, okay. Okay, cool. Um, can you hear me if I carry on talking? Yeah. So the other thing, I don't know if anyone read this. This is really good. Um, this is a great post on Medium. Um, thank you. Um, which is about how lots of really common everyday things are designed for men. And this is interesting because men are generally um, bigger th than women or children. Uh, and the seat belts. We say this here is a crash test dummy, um, and women are 50% more likely to die in a car accident because the seat belts are oriented to the male body. Uh, so if you think women are half the people, hi, no, oh yeah, yeah. If if you think that women are half of the people in the world, that isn't the, the furthest. That's like people who aren't men, right? It's, it's actually not that hard to start just like widening out a bit and thinking about meeting the needs of, of, of others. And my kind of my favorite worst ever thing I've heard about at the moment is um, Amazon have patented the design for noise cancelling headphones that are interrupted if somebody said your name which is basically people in an office at Amazon have their headphones on and don't know when other people are talking to them, so they've painted it a, a thing. Like, it, it, it's really easy to just look out into the world slightly more. And, like, in, in health care, um, where we've been working, everyone's got really excited about Google DeepMind, about the power of machine learning when actually, wouldn't it be great to book a doctor's appointment online, right? It's, it's, it's really, it can be really hard to go and meet important people at the Department of Health or at the NHS and talk about really straightforward everyday things like booking the doctor's appointments when they I think they've looked at the future. Um, and so there's a value to making tiny things and taking them in and demonstrating them and showing the value. Um, and actually, I, I ought to have said this earlier, but like the, big, the idea that actually it isn't that those th things that look really easy are the strength before wood. The, the fact that it could appear to be kind of boring and everyday doesn't mean it's easy. Uh, there are something like, I can't remember, maybe 3,000 doctor surgeries or something. Like, actually making something work in all, in all of those is a challenge. Uh, and lastly, so, just uh, going to talk about some of the things we've understood through making. Um, and this is a, a bit kind of niche to our project. But in the NHS, everyone is really excited about the idea of patient health records to the extent that it has its own acronym, you know, um, PHR. PHR is a, a thing. 
Um, and there's money sloshing around. And actually, it's really, prob it's really prob problematic um, because we were found in prototyping and making that actually that isn't really the thing that is needed. The thing that is needed is something that gives everybody a voice. Talk, talking to older people, we, underst we, un we understood that their need wasn't to carry their notes around particularly. It was more to be understood, valued, heard and empowered. They have a lot of expertise in their own condition. Even people in the last year of, of life only spend about a month in hospital. Most of their life is lived at home or in the care home. They're the experts. They ought to have the ability to manage it. And there's an obvious problem, yeah? Um, patient health records can go wrong. They can go down the loo, right? The battery on your phone can die. Um, it can be locked out. The ambulance can come and you're the only person who can, who can get into the record. But the reason that patient health records are a thing is because they exist. They exist offline. Um, every child who's born gets a book. Um, if you're pregnant, you get um, um, notes and you carry those around. Um, this is the thing that everyone knows, which means that the thing they're interested in making is the internet equivalent of the thing they know. Um, and what we've been trying to do is create other things to show them a, 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 um, different things, uh, different m futures. Um, so to finish, uh, I've got a couple of videos of the, the prototypes. Um, so this here um, shows you, thinking about our, collab our collaborative health record, this is the experience that Lou would have um, looking at that, thinking about, it's, it's about really giving her the right information at the right time. I don't know if anybody here has ever looked at the, the, the summary count record, which we're all um, legally able to do. It's a very, very long list that goes in alphabetical order um, with lots of clinical language and terminology and, and long sentences that um, isn't really about giving people the right information at the right time that is, is relevant to the next um, thing they're doing. And then we've looked at that from, uh, hang on, let me just check that's the right slide. Right, and then we've, uh, have I already shown you that one? What's going on, Laura? Which ones have I, which ones have I shown? Okay, have I shown this one? Right, okay. So this one here is about thinking what's happening today, what do I need to know? Uh, it's relevant that actually this information over here is in a different database to this information o over here because actually it's all about me. Um, and currently the NHS kind of expects you to behave like you have diabetes in the morning, huh? failure in the afternoon and dementia at night. Like it's not thinking of you as a, a whole being. Um, so that's kind of allowing you to um, prioritize, to think about things. We have another um, version of that where you, you, you're able to print things off and put them on the fridge and people in the family can edit it. Then we're, um, we've heard from lots of people that they want to be able to record consultations, that actually it gets really angsty um, um, going, um, going to the doctors and that generally the only thing y you hear about it is a letter that comes to you, uh, like a letter from your consultant to your GP that is copied to you a month later that is slightly hard to understand. Um, so actually you'd have your own record. And then just turning it around, we've been thinking about what your experience of this would be as a nurse. So having allowed someone to add their own information, the district nurse who's visiting that person today would, would have a different 
um, need to be expecting different language and terminology. And importantly, they have their own needs for capturing the thing that's happened. Um, Thank you. I didn't notice about your visit with Lucy. Yes. Are there any urgent changes that others need me to find about? No, nothing urgent. I was listening. So that is based on our experience of going and, tra and travelling around with specialist nurses who would drive around from home to home and that actually if you're able to take your notes into the patient record after the visit they th can then become available to everyone. I'm very nearly finished. Um, but basically kind of doing these things and we've made um, dozens of these kinds of moments that stitch um, together into an experience really helps us to understand what is, is standing in, in the way of making it happen. It's not really about a kind of lovely speculative future, it's, it's about really thinking about the practicalities. Um, what's the data, what's the infrastructure, what are the skills, the device this is. Um, if, if, if it will take us three years to train all the people who commission the software um, and that, that will improve things more than creating extra software, then um, let's train them now to create more change later on. So in terms of the thing that's happening with the work, we're, uh, we will be presenting it back to some important people in the NHS. Uh, we have the potential for quite a number of these uh, uh, things to kind of turn into the next stage. One of our challenges is um, we don't is 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 how not to get absorbed into the five years of delivery. How to kind of maintain lightness. Um, while actually making things that um, go into people's homes, we change their lives, give them better opportunities. And uh, it feels almost amazing that sometimes those kind of conversations can be opened up by something as easy as a piece of paper that has the drawing on it. But, you know, I think, I think, I think there's a, a chance and I'm very optimistic. So, look, there we go. Thank you very much.